Hello there. You ever see Apocalypse Now? Easily one of the best movies ever made, right? With an impressive cast of the likes of Marlon Brando, Martin Sheen and Robert Duvall, as well as being directed by Francis Ford Coppola, the genius director that gave us the Godfather trilogy. Truly a cinematic masterpiece, but I bet you didn't know that the production of the movie resembled me or you venturing into the kitchen to cook a meal. We have no recipe, no idea what we're gonna cook. It's still gonna taste alright and we're still gonna eat it, but that doesn't change the fact that we will use every single ingredient that we can get our hands on, as well as use every pot, pan and spoon in the kitchen. Take 7 hours to cook a dish and 7 more to clean up the mess that we made. I mean it's all said and done, it will be a miracle that we didn't burn the house down. Apocalypse Now was nothing short of a nightmare, an absolute disaster disaster for all the people involved. From actors getting too drunk and too high to remember their lines, to people showing up having never read the script, people having existential crisis and full mental breakdowns, people stealing stuff, actors taking off in the middle of shooting and never coming back, cattle mutilation and grave robbing. Yep, you heard that correctly. You can make a movie about the making of this movie. But before I get started, make sure you are buckled in and have your favorite snack at hand. And if you're feeling extra comfy, go ahead and drop a like on the video and sub for more. Apocalypse Now is loosely based off of a novel called Heart of Darkness that was published back in 1899. The book tells the story of the author's West African riverboat adventure. But our real story begins in 1969 when a young filmmaker called John Milius was encouraged to make a Vietnam War movie by a couple of his friends. You may have heard of them, they're called Steven Spielberg and George Lucas. Anyways, he did write the movie basing it loosely on Heart of Darkness and he felt that the premise of the fight between good and evil and war and the toll it takes on the people in it suited the Vietnam War setting perfectly. That's when Coppola started getting involved as he liked the idea. Melius ended up writing well over a thousand pages over multiple drafts after Francis encouraged him. He wanted Lucas to direct the movie and they even started checking possible shooting locations. However, they did want to film the movie in Vietnam during the war. As you can expect, the idea of shooting a movie in an active war war zone didn't go well with the studio heads and investors. Plus, there was still the big budget required as well as having to fly the entire cast and crew to a different country. The movie got put on hold. Fast forward to 1974 and Francis had just done the Godfather double and was looking for his next project. He bought the rights for the script from Milius and wanted him to direct it himself but he was already working on something else. So he turned to Lucas who was also working on something else. A little known indie project called um, Star Wars. So Francis said screw it, we're gonna do it live. First step was was to get in touch with the US Army to ask them for their help making the movie. After all, he needed a ton of equipment that you won't be able to get your hands on in your local supermarket. So Francis went to the army and he was like, can you guys help me make this movie and give me army equipment and weapons and stuff? They were like, yeah sure buddy, can we read the script? To which he replied, thank you very much, I will see myself out. The movie is basically slander of the US war machine. To go to the US Army and ask them to help you make it is... Not really a big brain move. Anyways, the army took one look at the script and they were like, nope, that limited his options on where to go. So he went to the Philippines government. They were the only other country that had access to US army equipment from that era, mainly helicopters, and they were actually willing to let him use it. The second step was to secure funding for the movie. The estimated budget was 12 to 14 million dollars, which he did manage to secure from a studio on the premise that the movie would star Steve McQueen and Marlon Brando. Only problem is, he had not yet talked to either of them about the movie. Things got more complicated when he pitched the leading role of Captain Willard to Steve McQueen. Apparently, he didn't want to leave the US for six weeks, the supposed filming schedule for the movie. Keep that number in mind as it will be relevant later on. McQueen asked for three million dollars, which Francis didn't want to pay. So he moved on to other options. He tried Al Pacino, Jack Nicholson, Robert Redford, Tommy Lee Jones, Clint Eastwood, and he even tried Robert De Niro. All these people were approached to play either of the leading roles of Captain Willard and Colonel Kurtz. They all refused. Everywhere he went people refused, saying that the movie would be trouble and that the production would be difficult. Francis was so frustrated already, well before the production even started. Here he was, a five times Oscar winner and actors were turning him down left, right and center. He got so mad that he took his five Oscars and he threw them out of the window of his house. Moving on to early 1976 and he finally managed to get Brando on board to play Kurtz, after agreeing to give him two million dollars as well as a percentage of the money made. As for Willard, 
After getting rejected by his like top 10 picks, he finally landed Harvey Keitel and off to the Philippines they went. After early camera tests, Francis didn't like the way Keitel was playing Willard. So he fired him and replaced him with Martin Sheen. And then they started shooting. At this point, things were actually going well. I mean, after all, he had the money that he needed, he had an alright cast, good shooting location and equipment. And it looked like it was gonna be smooth sailing from now on. And that's when shit started going sideways and never stopped from that point forward. Starting from April 1976, about a month into the production, Typhoon Olga hit. It destroyed sets and stranded crew members. Most of the people went back to the States and the production stopped for months. When production finally resumed, it wasn't without all kinds of weird and unexpected problems. First, they had to hire bodyguards for the set since one time an entire day's payroll was stolen. And at night, they had to be careful because the set was being prowled by wild tigers. Well into the production, he found out that some of the uh, over-enthusiastic crew members decided that in the interest of authenticity, they had to use real-life dead bodies during takes. What gave it away was the stink the bodies started making. And also the police showing up to question the crew and even take their passports. Because it turns out the man they got the corpses from was a grave robber. And then there was the unique problem of filming the famous Attack of the Valkyries scene. Apparently the Philippines government was fighting a real war against actual insurgents. So they kept pulling the helicopters away from the movie. Sometimes even during filming. And sending them to fight actual battles. Now bear in mind these are all just the small issues that they had to deal with. The appetizers if you will. The real problems start with the Martin Sheen situation. Apparently Sheen was at a really low point in his life. He was struggling with alcohol abuse and being away from his home and his wife for a long time took an unexpected toll on him. He was miserable and about to be even more miserable thanks to a dream that Francis had. Yep, a dream. Apparently Francis had a dream where he met a green beret that told him that Sheen was playing Willard wrong. That something was missing. That an army captain like Willard should be more vain and proud of himself. So what did Francis do? He put Sheen, a struggling alcoholic who was borderline depressed, in a room with cameras all around him, gave him a bottle of whiskey and left him there. Sheen went on a drunken bender for two days and started taking his clothes off, dancing naked and practicing judo. All the while, still naked by the way. Yep, that hotel room scene? There was zero acting involved. Sheen was drunk and having an existential crisis. He punched the mirror and rolled on the bed with blood gushing from his hand. For real, not acting. Him sitting naked by the side of the bed crying like a madman? Also real. He had a total mental breakdown that day and the most terrifying thing is that wasn't even the worst thing that happened to him before filming this movie was over. At this point you're probably thinking the director is an absolute a-hole. Gonna have to agree with you on that one. But don't you worry because it's about to catch up with him. And the first person delivering was none other than Brando. You're probably thinking no way. They worked together before on The Godfather right? Well it turns out they didn't have a great relationship. Brando was in a really strong position in this movie. He was getting two million dollars plus a percentage of the box office stake and already got one million dollars a front so when it came time for him to join the production he showed up drunk and fat like really fat not only that but he hadn't read the book or even the script he didn't even know his lines after finally agreeing to give the script a good read he was like I ain't saying any of that shit. There was a lot of back and forth between him and Francis and eventually Francis had to cave and agreed that Brando will only be filmed in shadowy areas with no light trying to hide his massive weight gain and also he can say whatever the hell he wants. The next day Brando showed up on set with his head shaved bald. So that was Brando. And then there was Dennis Hopper. He played the hippie journalist that was following Kurtz around. After shooting wrapped, Hopper said that he felt like he had fought in the actual Vietnam War. During the shooting, he lived on a daily diet of half a gallon of rum, 28 beers and 3 ounces of coke. Which didn't really help him remember his lines either. When Francis asked him how he could help him with his role, Hopper replied, give me an extra ounce of coke. Which they ended up giving to him by the way. Hollywood, am I right? <laughs> To make matters worse, Brando hated Hopper. He thought that he was really unprofessional showing up late and high and not remembering his lines. Yep, I shit you not. The person doing that thing was offended when another person did the exact same thing. I swear, these actors are worse than children. But still, Brando wouldn't appear with Hopper even if they were in the same scene. So they had to shoot them separately. And Hopper wasn't the only one constantly drunk or high or both. Most of the cast and crew were away from home for a very long time. Well over schedule and budget and not even close to finishing the movie. 
The actor that played Lance, the surfer guy, he spent the entire shoot high on speed, LSD, pot and whatever he could get his hands on. Eventually Brando told Francis that they had used him long enough and if they needed more they should get somebody else. And then he just got up, got on a plane and never came back. The shooting wrapped around the end of 1976, but by the time Francis went home to review the footage he realized that the movie had no ending. Between actors being high or drunk, forgetting their lines or never bothering to learn them in the first place, as well as Brando being too fat to film the original ending in the script. The original script was not possible anymore, so he flew the whole cast back to the Philippines for extensive reshoots in early 1977. Fast forward to March 1977 and Martin Sheen had a heart attack. Yup. He almost died crawling for half a mile before he was rescued. It was so bad that a priest whispered his last rites in his ears in a different language that he didn't speak. And with the movie having so many issues already and being well over budget, if the studio heads or the investors got a whiff of any of that, they would have shut the movie down for sure. So Sheen lied, pretending that he just had a heat stroke. Anyways, Sheen was gone from the set for over a month, recovering from his heart attack, and his brother even filled in for him for a bit. So with the whole cast being high as hell, and with Sheen suffering a mental breakdown during the first shoot and then a heart attack during the second one and with Brando being fat having to frame him in near total darkness with only his face visible and saying mostly utter nonsense throughout his scenes suffice to say Francis had to make do with what he had the original script was freaking useless now and he was making shit up as he went along all these things mounting up they took a toll on our boy Francis years later Francis said that he had a 32 million dollar loan to his name which he put all into making this movie, with his car, house and even his godfather profits all down as security for the loan. The pressure of it had its toll on him both physically, making him lose over 45 kilograms and mentally, threatening to kill himself multiple times during the filming and when he heard that Sheen was found crawling up the road after having a heart attack, he fell down on the ground and he had a seizure. Apocalypse Now spent nearly two years in post-production. The original schedule of six weeks for shooting went from the early 1976 to late 1977, spending almost two years just shooting the movie, and the film's total cost ended up being close to 45 million dollars. But it was not all in vain, as the movie made well over 100 million dollars worldwide, while being one of the best movies ever made. It was a tale of pain, misery, and a lot of drugs for all people involved. But to be real with you all, since none of us had to go through any of that shit ourselves, if it was all just to get us that one shot of Sheen getting up from under the river and face paint, or the ride of the Valkyrie, or I love the smell of napalm in the morning, it was worth it, wasn't it? It was all worth it. Which brings us to the moral of this story. The best sacrifice is somebody else's. Bye!